This is Joe from Art Alien TV, and today we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of things I've got for you here. And it will really help if you have on your browser attached to it something like this, which is Hover Zoom Magnifier. Okay? Now, there's different versions you can get. One's called Hover Zoom, there's other magnifiers you can get, but this is my favourite. This means you can look at the stuff I'm showing you in these gigapans for yourself and zoom in close with this and really look at the objects properly and not just glance over them or ignore them like NASA do, okay? Now, the first one I'm going to show you is the latest one. Now, this is one I've just put up. Uh, this is Sol 4073 and we have more spikes. This is in a fork shape, okay? Now, unfortunately, these images are in black and white, but some of these black and white images are actually better. I've marked it on here, right? It's not very clear and it's not very big. I would say this is about a foot tall. And we have a fork-like shape, spiky object here with a weird object in front of it, like a slab here. If I show the magnifier, here are the spikes. There's three spikes, one, two, three. And we have this weird little thing with a thing sticking out of it here. It looks like a key or some kind of uh, thing sticking out, right? And then we have this slab just behind. Now, this slab may or may not be uh, a natural formation, but there's lots of stuff like that in the area. If you look around, there's loads of weird slabs on the ground, lots of layered material, lots of broken up um, sedimentary rock and layered material. But not all of this stuff, I think, is natural. And over here, we have this thing here, which looks like some kind of wreckage, right? Now, what I've done on, on this one, like with most of these, I've, I've done clips for you already and enhanced the colour and the contrast so you can see these things a bit better because they're a bit hard to see, some of these things. Um, the lighting in Gale Crater, especially by the Curiosity Rover, is not great. It's okay some of the time, but a lot of the time it's quite dark. So you really have to brighten these images up, okay? Um, here it is. There are the spikes. There's three of them in a fork shape. And we have this weird thing in front of it, which is in front of this kind of slab here, with like a key-shaped thing sticking out, like a little thing there, right? If I zoom in, it doesn't get that much clearer when you go too close because it's a bit of a distance away and not that big and the rover hasn't zoomed in. But you can see here that there's this weird thing sticking out like a key shaped thing or like a T-shaped object sticking out of this thing here which I think is possibly artificial. There's also a negative clip of it here and you can see the spikes here, three of them. The one on the right isn't as, as defined as the other two. I think it's thinner, it's very thin. But these are quite thick, these ones. And we have that weird thing sticking out here. So you can look at this in negative as well. And I've got a black and white enhanced clip here, which is a little bit darker. So you can see that fork thing a bit better. But it's not it's difficult because you've got very light material behind it. And the, the fork is actually not that dark. So it's hard to differentiate it between the foreground and the, and the background here. It's awkward, right? Unfortunately, it's just the way that the the light falls on it and the angle is taken from. And then we have that other thing that looks like wreckage over here. Now I've colorized this to make it look more like it probably would on the surface. In reality, this sand is a sort of darkish gray, like a bluey gray color, okay? A lot of it, not all of it. And uh, this is a sort of weird box section here, right? I don't know what it's from. It could be off a boat, could be off a building. I don't know, but it, it looks very artificial to me because we have a, a sort of box section here. And then we have these parts here coming back. And there's loads of this flat material on the ground. A lot of it's like this, where we have complex sort of um, erosion on it. Like this, right? We've got lots of this material in the area. And that's not that unusual. There's a lot of this stuff about, right? But a lot of this, I think, is actually concrete and not just natural sedimentary rock in the lake bed. Because if you look at this down here, 
we got what looks like a normal rock here with loads of spiky parts on it here, right, on the, on the right. And then to the left down here, we have a perfectly straight slab in the ground. And you see a lot of these. I'm going to show you some more of these in a minute. In this area, there's loads of slabs on the ground. Now, we're led to believe that this, all these slabs on the ground are just sedimentary rock from the bottom of the lake bed, which have cracked. Now, I'm sure most of them are. Uh, I'm not disputing that, but some of them look very uniform and look like they're possibly made of metal or concrete or a mixture of the two, okay? Concrete with wire mesh going through it, as I've shown many times before, okay? Uh, and this, this is a good example of a very straight edged slab here, which kind of looks artificial to me because we've got a straight part coming along here and it's split away from this part in a perfect, almost dead straight line there. And we've got a nice right angle here and then it comes back into the ground here as buried. So this may be a completely rectangular section here, but which is split here. And uh, it's, it's kind of half buried there, right? Now, this is weird. So we got a fork shaped spiked object here. We got that little box thing here with a key sticking out of it, a key shaped object. We got possible wreckage here. Now, I'm gonna to go to the next one now. This is Sol 470, Curiosity Rover again, corroded metal material. Now, this is similar stuff we're looking at here. And this isn't far away from where we just were. It's only three days earlier. So this is all very recent stuff, right? I've been saving these for for one video. Um, this is all the stuff I found this this year so far in 2024, and we have another spiky, weird object here, on the ground. I'll show you the gigapan here. The gigapan is black and white again, and this isn't very big. This is about six inches, maybe four. This thing here, right there it is. If you have the magnifier, have a look at the magnifier. There's the spike at the top. We got this, what looks like corroded metal with a spike, a very sharp pointed spiked object in front, which is attached to it here, down here like this, right? And we have a, a metal bar sticking out the side of it here, right? Let's go in closer. And when you get too close, it doesn't get any sharper. So you've got to get it about right. So we've got the spike here, the black thing here. And behind that, we have what looks like a bracket sticking out with a part sticking off that, like attached to that as well, like a hinge or a bracket or something like that. So a lot of this stuff isn't just rock. And it, you can actually see that that is not a rock, okay? Because we have a metal bracket behind a, a, a perfect spike there which is probably a piece of steel or some other metal, I would imagine. I and mean, then we have a corroded piece of metal behind it, which is more textured, which is all attached to this thing here, right? Which is probably concrete, right? So this may be another example of, of a, a, a part of a object or structure that's completely shattered and, and, and eroded away, and we have some of it left and the softer materials eroded away like around it here at the bottom, which is probably concrete, right? Because if this was a normal rock, it would not have a bracket sticking out of it and a pointed part like this with corroded metal behind it. There we are in color. I'll show you with the magnifier again. So we've got the spike here, long part. You've got little fingers on this bit as well. Little spiky finger bits here, rough material. Then we have that perfect spike there with a bracket right here behind it with a part coming off it here. So really this should be called corroded metal material and bracket or something, I don't know, but uh, there we are, there's that one. And incidentally, there's something weird in this bit of material here as well. This is weird. The way it kind of sticks out, that looks artificial as well, just there. We got this part in the rock just there, very strange, okay? And then we have another perfectly straight slab in the ground, just here. Here we are, look, look at this. 
with a nice right angled corner here and in there. It's buried on the, over this side here. But if it wasn't buried, would that be perfectly square? Would the corner here be rectangular as well, like a real nice point? Maybe. I am wondering whether a lot of these slabs in the ground are, are actually sheets of of concrete, slabs of concrete, like paving stones or something. Large paving slabs that have cracked and, and uh, been buried and eroded. That's what a lot of them look like. They, they don't look like just random bits of sedimentary rock, okay? Or solidified clay. But you can clearly see that's broken off from here because this would join onto that bit there. But so straight, really straight, okay? So that was uh, 4070, Curiosity Rover. Next one, this is also Curiosity Rover, this one's in colour. So we've got more of this material on the ground. We've got all these slabs. There's, these are everywhere, right, in this area. Absolutely millions of them. Um, and a lot of them look natural, but a lot of them look really unnatural. And then we have this thing down here, right? which I called Gorg, because it resembles a gargoyle, and it may well be. I have shown many, many figurines and statues, including giant sphinxes and little, little figurines and stuff like that, in this area, right, not far from here. Literally within a quarter of a mile, half a mile of here. Loads and loads of stuff over the years. I've been doing this for, I've been showing these, these now for about 10 years. They're definitely there. Not all of them are necessarily gargoyles. Some of them are just little statues. Some of them may be just rocks that look funny, funny shapes. But this one, if you look carefully, I'll show you the clip I've got here. I've enhanced the uh, contrast a bit on this one, right? I'll go back a little bit and I'll show you the magnifier. This is really odd. We have the eye here. Look at my cursor, the pointer. Eye, nose, mouth. We've got an ear just here. We've got this weird point on this head with like a little face on it. And then we have a, like a body coming down here and what seems to be like an arm or hand coming over holding something here. I can't quite make it out. Now, bear in mind, these things are probably half a million years old, possibly older. Uh, they, they may only be 50,000 years old, but they're probably more like half a million years old, a lot of these things. And they're very eroded. But a lot of these things were, may well have been buried in sand for thousands of years, which would have protected them from a severe erosion for at least some of the time, okay? And that's what I've always said about a lot of these things. They are heavily eroded but probably have been covered on and off with sand over the years, many times, okay? Which would protect them, like the Sphinx in Egypt was when we found it, it was actually buried up to the, up to its chin, okay? Um, so it's similar to that. So we got that as well. I mean, that's just crazy. You can actually see like the head there with an ear just there. The details in this are pretty good because it's fairly close to the rover. And this is about four inches, I would say. It's just down here, fairly close to the rover, four or five inches, maybe six. It's quite wide. So about I'd, yeah, maybe five, five or six tall by four-ish wide there. I'm not sure exactly, but something like that. It's not, it's not huge. And it seems to be joined into the ground. It seems to go into the ground and it looks like it's joined to this piece here, just here. You can actually see like a little ridge going in there which says to me that it's joined to that, which may be part of a, a ruined structure, okay? Very weird, a lot of this stuff. And there's some interesting other slabs over here which look fairly kind of straight, like this one, right? So there's more what looks like concrete material and uh, weird carvings as well. This is the first one I found in a while, actually. This Gorg dude here. Let's go in close there. Look at it up close. There we are. Right? Look at it. 
You can see the head, you can see the chin with this straight part here. We've got like an arm coming round, holding like a sword or a little object here, maybe. I don't know for sure, but it, it really does look like a gargoyle holding something. And uh, the arm on this side seems to be missing, but there is an arm coming round here, just here, right? Just there. So cool, that one. That was really interesting. And then we got Sol 4060. This is what I call the rudder. Now, this is more of the same sort of material. We have loads and loads of these slabs and strange objects on the ground. A lot of it looks like wreckage. Most of it's probably just sedimentary rock, like I said before. There's loads of it in the area. But occasionally, in between some of these things, you find objects and you think, hang on a minute, that, that's really odd. And uh, it doesn't just look like a piece of rock or a rock. And there's the rudder. Not very big, I would say. Height about maybe, don't know how far away this is. It's probably around about a foot or two. About a foot there. And it's probably about two foot long, but it's at an angle. So I've got some more of this material down here. This is in color, this part, where we've got these weird spiky bits here. That's like more corroded material, which is quite nice. But not necessarily artificial, a lot of this stuff. But it's got a nice angle to it on the corner here, to see there. Look at that. Is that metal? Is this corroded, eroded iron or bronze or, or some other alloy or something? I don't know. It doesn't look like rock, some of this stuff. And there's the, the rudder, which I've colorized. Okay, there it is. Now, this may actually be a piece of rock, but if you look carefully, we got the, the main part here, the longer part here, and it's got this perfect little curve there, which goes up, and then we have like a, a tail plane on the back, and it has a little bit sticking out at the top, as if there was like another part, like a, um, you would get on an aeroplane, like a little rudder part on the back of that maybe. Um, I forget the name of those now. Not, are they ailerons? I can't remember now. You know the little rudders you get on aircraft? Where they have a wing and they have the little rudders on, the, on there which swing back and forth and steer it. You know, it's a bit like that. It's very odd. So there was that. Not much else in this one that I found anyway. There's, there, there are some weird things, but nothing conclusive in this area. Okay, so that was uh, 4060, the rudder. And then we have this. Now, this is more weird, corroded material. This is perforated, I think, perforated metal. And this is in black and white, unfortunately, but we have very good detail in this because it's quite close to the rover. So this stuff isn't very big, but the detail is high because it's close up. Right, so we've got lo lovely, sharp, intricate detail here. And here's the object in question, which is very odd. Look at this piece here. It has this corroded, perforated part here, which is kind of split into parts, and uh, it's got the, all these little holes in it. Okay, look at that. That's the actual pan there. There's another pan next to it here, which is quite small, but we've got, in here, we've got another perfectly straight piece in the ground here, which looks like a part of something here, and uh, there's also weird kind of little box sections like this, which are all kind of broken up and eroded. Weird stuff going on here, right? And there, there's the enhanced clips of these a bit closer. I'll show you with the magnifier. I mean, this piece is absolutely ruler straight. Look at this. Is that just a normal rock with a right angle part here and a perfectly straight edge like that? I don't think so. This, a, a lot of it is actual wreckage and ruins. Uh, a lot of it's metallic, a lot of it's concrete. I'm absolutely sure of it. I've shown so many examples of this over the years. I'm not in any doubt about that whatsoever. And here's a, a, a nice enhanced clip of that perforated, corroded metal piece with these holes in it. This here, isn't it? it does that look like, like a, a normal rock? Not only... Is it perforated but it's actually going 
against the grain. It, it, we got the grain coming this way across this um, material here, and then it comes that way. So it's it's like it has to be manufactured. I can't see how that can possibly be a natural object because we've got this darker perforated material attached to this here, which is much lighter. So it looks like two different types of material almost here. So this may have been a metal sheet going through some concrete here. And this, this may be concrete here, the lighter stuff, and this darker bit here may be a sheet of metal that was going through it. And it's eroded in, in an interesting perforated way like this. And the wind's kind of eroded it a bit. Interesting, right? So in context, when you look at it around, there's lots of complicated stuff here. Let's look at that with a the magnifier. There's that bit there. And then to the left of it, we've got another piece here with perforations. So is a lot of this stuff metal? I do think some of it is. And uh, really interesting stuff. So we've got all these different things. Now, this last one is the Perseverance Rover. This is thousands of miles away in the Jezero crater. And then we have a standing kind of slab sticking up. Now, this may or may not be natural. I don't know, but it looks unnatural to me. Look at this. We have these slabs in the ground, and then we have one sticking up like a gravestone or standing stone just here, right? Really nice. Really nice um, detail in these. Look at that. It's not perfectly straight, but it's standing up. It looks kind of artificial to me, and there's some weird little things here. Nothing you'd recognise. And then we have this strange mound. Now, is it possible that this mound, like many of the other mounds I've showed in this part of Jadira Crater, is actually an artificial mound? And perhaps there was a building here. Because we have all this material here. And what look like possible rooms here, okay? And these would have, would have been walls either side, perhaps. And then we've got these crazy mounds in the distance. Loads and loads of them at the edge of Jezero Crater. And some of these also look artificial as well. There's some crazy ones I've shown before. Some of them look like little pyramids and stuff. But a lot of these are actual burial mounds. And I've shown that some of these mounds, when you get up close to them, they have things like skulls and carved objects and uh, funerary art lying around near the base of some of these. Because what they, I think they were doing, the Martians, is when they buried people, they buried them in mounds like we used to many thousands of years ago. Some cultures still do it. And they would layer them. And the mound would get bigger and bigger. And eventually, of course, this mound would erode away. And then you would end up with heads poking out. As the, the sand and material eroded away, you could see the burials sticking out. And if they're buried in a sitting position, like I've shown some of these are, then their heads would stick out. They'd be sat up. which would explain why we see so many heads sticking up from some of these mounds and areas in Gale Crater as well as Jezero Crater, okay? Now, I've shown many examples of this. You can go through my playlists and videos and you'll see dozens and dozens of examples, well over a hundred, actually, of, of such things, okay? And there's often funerary art and things like helmets and, and objects on the ground, like figurines and little animal figurines and things like that buried with them. And these often are stood up as well. So as these things erode away, we see these things appearing as the sand and material erodes from the wind. Okay, That explains why a lot of them are facing the same direction, usually north. And it also explains why they're all kind of sat up or their heads are upright. And of course, in between all that, we get gargoyles, we get other things like wreckage, red buildings, red boats, red vehicles and all types of other material. I mean, absolutely all sorts, okay? And I've shown even things like cars as well, which are like dropped in the lake bed and stuff like that. Just to prove that I'm not making it up, I've got a whole massive 
collection now of over 1100 videos and I've got loads of playlists so check out my playlists right because I've got everything organized so I've got structures in one I've got like buildings in the other I've got like doors doorways and in one I've got all these spikes and, and things in another I've got dozens of playlists I've got, I've got about a hundred playlists now um, something like that and all these things can be seen so everything I'm telling you can be backed up with official NASA images like these are with all the links and everything else so they can all be verified I'm not saying these things for fun I'm saying these things because that's what these things are at least that's what I think most of them are I may be wrong on a few of them but I'm not just showing my own work here. I'm also showing things that other people have found. Uh, I mean, this was found, this was spotted by Jim Miller just the other day. This standing stone here, which may be a grave marker or something. Similar to others I've shown, okay? Uh, so a lot of the show, stuff I show is other, other researchers' work as well. And I always give them credit. So thank you to them for helping me, okay? So thanks for watching, everybody. Check out these things. Get a magnifier attached to your browser and this will be a lot more fun looking at these things like this wreckage and these weird forked spikes in the ground and everything else we got this one here we got this one here the gargoyle or gorg as i've called him may not be a him could be a her <laughs> we have the rudder and we have the perforated metal and we have a standing stone just here Okay, so thanks for watching everybody. Please like and subscribe. And if you are subscribed and you're not getting my stuff fed to you by YouTube, make sure you have all selected on the subscriber bell. Okay, now I, I subscribe to a lot of channels and I don't get their stuff either. So God knows what's going on there. Uh, YouTube are useless when it comes to these things. But yeah, check if you're subscribed with the all selected on the subscribe bell, okay? Because there's, there's like a little sub menu. And hopefully you will get notifications when my videos come, okay? Thanks for watching. I will see you soon.